Hello again and welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're in another wonderful day in paradise. Well, sort of wonderful. We've, we've had a difficult time finding a scene today and I always struggle with that. I find the scene is one of the most difficult things to get right. We went down by the sea and it, it was a bit rainy but the wind was blowing a gale and the, the surf was really loud and it didn't really give me a chance to do a painting there. So we've retreated a little way inland today uh, as it took us about an hour to find this place. But we found a place in the end and it's going to be a slightly different composition, uh, a vertical composition, and that's going to make it a little bit more interesting. So I've done a little sketch of the picture I'm going to do, the vertical format of it, and, and there it is. And it's quite interesting really because we, we're looking underneath the palm trees, so looking, so they're almost above us, which is a really interesting composition, something that a camera can't capture. So here's the picture set out. I'm not sure you can see it on the camera, but I've done a drawing of it um, from basically the same as the sketch I did. And again, it's an interesting picture because I seem to be looking right up underneath the palm trees. And that's what's so amazing about the human eye that you can do that. Right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to paint the sky in. And so it's a wonderful shade of cobalt blue. Um, that's one of these things about this side type of environment. The skies are beautiful. Uh, but don't, don't want to make it too blue, although it is very blue. So a bit of cobalt blue, some water, that's it. And it is as blue as anything up there, it really is a solid blue. So we'll, we'll pop this in. So I'm using a little Winsor & Newton mop. I probably could have gone for my bigger mop today, but I didn't. I regret that now. <laughs> so carry on down the page, trying to maybe leave a few spaces for the, for the palm trees. There you go. Beautiful light out here at the moment. We didn't paint, we, we, we wanted to paint at the seaside today, at the beach, but uh, there was a, a lot of uh, wind noises and it was really tricky, so we we decided to retreat a little bit inland and have a go at this, this type of scene. Okay, so there's the sky pretty much in. So I'm leaving some, some space for the, um, for the palm trees to come in. Just to get rid of that, that's sort of blobbed in a bit. Right, okay, so that's the sky and I thought that worked out okay. So change of brush. So we'll work down now into the into the um, the actual palm tree. So I'm going to do a little bit of burnt or ultramarine blue. Because the palm trees are quite a browny sort of colour here. They're not sometimes they're quite light in colour, but this, they're quite dark at the moment. So I'm going to start putting those in now. So I'm going to start that here. Maybe a little bit of raw sienna as well. Coming down here. Okay, that seems all right. So you have to give it the hint. Now, Things have to dry a little bit before, before you progress too much in this type of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the roof in now. So the roof is quite a dark colour, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it a bl much bluer tone. So again, my two favourite colours, which are ultramarine blue and burnt umber. I'm going to give this section here a nice bit of darkness. I love making watercolour look like watercolour. So I love making it look wet, and I think that's an important part in your aesthetic judgment of how to paint watercolour. It does look wet, if you can see that. Nice and wet. And then add a bit more blue here. So that's the roof line come in. It looks quite pretty. So I'll leave that for a bit now, and then I'm going to head back. I'm going to change my brush to a slightly smaller brush. Okay, I'm going to head up into the palm tree now, and the colours up there are, are fantastic. There's a, a real beauty to it. 
Right, so the colors I'm going to make, I'm going to um, exaggerate the colors a bit. So that's some ultramarine blue, beautiful green, so a bit of viridian there, some yellow. So I'm just trying to grab the colors in here. And now I'm going to try and sort of definitely try to indicate these branch, these They're quite exciting. They're, they're not like an oak tree in England, that's for sure. Um, they're full of colour, beautiful colour. And I'm gonna I'm gonna paint the the shadow side of these things quite bluish. Isn't that there we go, and then that side, and then feelings of the actual palms coming out. So again, I think of it more like I do a portrait with hair. Um, I, I don't want to paint every strand of hair. I want, to, I want to hint at things, and hinting at things is what it's all about. Okay, a bit of cerulean blue. Okay. changing the colour all the time. I love changing colour in, in, uh, in painting watercolour. It's a, my favourite thing to do. I wouldn't want to paint, thing all this, paint everything the same colour. So then we're going to walk, go down on a much... This, this particular palm tree here is in, a, in, a, in light, so the, the, the actual palms are going to be much yellower. And then it bends down. But they're beautiful shapes. nice. And then palm tree comes up here. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of it's sort of looking like what I hoped it to look like. Now I'm gonna get some ultramarine blue, just pure ultramarine now, and start adding some of that. So into the shadow areas here. Watching, again, it's a value study that I'm trying to organize here, so not necessarily hyper-realism. I had a question um, recently on YouTube um, about the apple that I painted, and it was a really interesting question. I'm, I'm very, pleased, very pleased I had the question. And it, it was about the, the apple not being quite resolved enough, and there was a feeling that, um, well, it's, it's just not enough detail on it. But, that's a really interesting conundrum we've got here, and we've all got to decide what our own style is going to be. Now, my style is um, impressionistic, but m in many ways it's purely for practical reasons. Um, I, I, I'm a plein air painter, and I like, I like to paint plein air. Now, if, if, I, if I did a picture with more resolution on it, I, I may not finish the painting. So it's important to work out what style you are so that you can actually have the time to finish the painting. And if I, if I did more, um, if I did more detail, I'm not convinced I could finish the painting. So that's, that's the compromise that I've made. And we've all got to make a compromise. I've got some red in here as well, which I thought was interesting. Okay. Nice red colors. Okay, so I'll return now to the um, palm tree on the right. So I'm going to try and get the get the um, the actual tree, the trunk of it in, and that would give me an idea of where I'm going more. So it's uh, come down here. So now a lighter. There's a lot of reflected light coming in, sort of much higher than the other one. So then it's got some. I don't know what sort of the base of the palm tree is, the sort of, this is where the coconuts are, in there. And then we'll start adding the, um, the actual palm trees, just slightly underneath here. And that was a bit too dark. So 
So the main part of the actual base of the actual leaves are quite yellow. There we go. Interspersed with lots of dark elements here. And then it has the sort of horizontal stripes on it. I don't want to put too much detail in because what, what you want to do with, uh, with watercolour is to have an even detail. So you don't want one section being hyperreal and the next section being underreal. So you, you need a consistency in, in, uh, in your approach. Okay, so now the top bits. So add a bit more viridian. Green. Remember, always change the colour. So, how about a bit of swooning in there? Yeah, I don't want to paint everything detailed. So, it's it's, it's a real aesthetic cha uh, challenge to to paint some things detailed, and just to get the right balance. blue again. How about maybe a bit of uh, cobalt blue? That might be a nice colour. Yeah, I'm, I'm not painting the colours as I see them. That's not what I'm interested in. I, I'm trying to uh, give it a little bit of interest to the colours. That's the way that bends over. To the green again. So the more yellow colour coming in. It's quite windy today, so they are moving around quite a lot. Really moving. I was looking at the video of me on the train station uh, this morning and I had a very deep husky voice in it. I had a little bit of a cold and uh, it sounded a bit like Clint Eastwood. Well, an English version of Clint Eastwood, really husky. Not my normal voice. My daughter's looked at the video and says, hey, what's happened to your voice? Well, it's okay now. I think it's okay now. You'll have to let me know. It's the winter, the winter colds. So, and then they change it. Really interesting. I'm quite enjoying painting palm trees. Again, if you ever attempt to them, it really is a question of simplifying them. You could spend days doing one of these otherwise and you'll never get the painting done. So painting plan air, that really does decide your style. <coughs> so that's pretty much the, the palm trees done, the, the, the sort of the bulk of it done now. So I'm, I'm going to move down the picture now. So I've done the little bit of the roof here. So that's where that meets. So if, if you notice, I, I painted um, a, around the roof, really. So the, so the palm trees over the top of the roof. So it's, you, you have to work out what the order is in painting, really. And um, it, it does have an order that you really want to focus on. Right, I'm now going to have a go at the, the drainage. There's a gutter that's coming on here. And I, I find that really interesting. That's a wonderful opportunity to provide some interesting colour. Right, okay, so cobalt blue again, maybe a little bit of ultramarine. And I'm going to start popping, a bit too dark, popping that in. And maybe a 
a little bit of um, have his own crimson. All the shadows are blue for me. I love that. It's um, it's not real, uh, but it's certainly not that blue. But I like it. I like it. it looks pretty. And as you as you may, if you have seen some of my videos before, I'm interested in, a, in an aesthetic approach to painting, not necessarily a, a technical approach. Well, the techniques is 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 important, but I'm, I'm not really interested in too much technique. Nice, so now a little bit more to the roof. So again, cobalt blue and ultramarine blue. And that's going to create this darker, maybe a bit of burnt umber as well, this darker section in here. Lovely and warm in the shade here now. When I think back to what it's like in Scotland, it's, uh, it's chalk and cheese. Okay. So I'm going to work down to the the actual trunk of both of the both of the palm trees. So. Trying to. Uh, create the solidity of them. Okay, so now we're going to head off to the. Um, we're going to head off to the windows now. But first, I might actually do some of the background of it. So, I have a slightly bigger brush. And it's a very white wall, but I don't want to we don't want to paint it completely white. Maybe some, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre in there, just to just maybe to warm it up slightly, but not much. As you can see that, just to give a little bit of something rather than just plain boring white. Maybe it feels like it has a little bit of age to it. Okay, now we're going to head back to the the shutters. There's a, there's a sort of awning over each window, which I'm going to try and paint in now. So, um, so the shadow side, so there's this top bit. A bit of raw sienna, yellow ochre. One, there's three or four of them. There we go. Yeah, that's quite nice. And then the top of it is a little bit bluer. There's a sort of ridge. And that's quite nice because it sort of separates it from the background. Nice bit of color too as well. Underneath here, I do love colour. We have the palm trees shadow coming on here, which is really interesting. So I'll, I'll do a bit more detail of up what's the window like before I do too much of that shadow. So we're going to head into the 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 actual underneath of the window now. So it's burnt umber and raw sienna. One, two, three. And the shutters. So as you can see, it's a real, I'm really hinting at the things. I'm not really trying to paint with great resolution. And the resolution will come, but hopefully later. Let's 
that's good. And then there's another one down around the side of the building. So around here. So I'll try and make it an interesting colour. That was, uh, that was a little bit of cerulean. And a little bit of ultramarine. And then the light bit, which is the raw sienna. Yeah, underneath it's quite dark, it. and then the window stretches down. I think I'll do that in cerulean. Now that this that, that part here is my favourite bit of the painting so far. That really worked out well. Love that. One, two, three. Now for the little panes of glass. One painted quite roughly. And underneath. Top of the window, window awning. I love that bit, that's one of my favourite bits so far. Okay, so there's the windows half done. I will come back to them in a minute just to give them a bit of resolution, but not too much. Now, with, with, with painting watercolour, the order of things is that it's the near things first you paint and then the background. So you paint uh, the near things and, and then you go over the background. So my next, my next challenge is the wonderful um, tropical palm tree there, it's at the front. So I'll try and get that in. So Viridian. Okay. Uh, Viridian. And a little bit of yellow. In there. A lovely colour. And the shadows again I'm going to paint in cerulean blue. So here we go. It's a it's so different from, from Edinburgh. All these wonderful new sights and sounds. It's a fern tree. Lovely fern tree coming in there. So they're full of shadows and what a pleasure to paint. A nice light one coming off the right. That's nice. I love that one. Sometimes you know you've just done, you just know you've done the right mark. And uh, I, I love to be able to recognize that. And when, when I've done that, I just don't touch it. It's done. So the shadow side of it, and the paint there, and there. Okay. And then another one coming behind, maybe behind this one. Okay, so again, I'm going to return now to the trunk and there's a darker section in there. That wasn't the right color, but it'll do. So it was a definite blueness coming at the trunk. As is the other one. I've decided to put the trunk in the tree in this one rather than hide it behind the bush that's there. So you, you can change things around. That's the marvelous thing about watercolor and painting in general. You don't have to paint exactly what you see. There we go. Right, so now I'm gonna put a wash. There's a lot of bushes behind there now. So now I'm gonna put that wash in. So I'm gonna grab a bigger brush, a bigger sable brush, number 14. It's a Raphael brush. And I'm going to put a light wash there. So 
um, raw sienna and viridian. But quite a light wash, trying to indicate everything here. Lots going on. The flickering lights coming into it, flickering th around the trees. And then there's a nice bit of grass at the front, which is quite burnt. So I'm going to change change the colour to a sort of yellow ochre colour because it's not strictly completely green. See that? Not completely green. <clears throat> right, and now walking around the side of the of the building now, there's a little bit of plant life. So quite a quite a lot of green around the side. So what I'm aim, aiming for this is a real splash of colour. Okay. So that's the green bit. Now I'm going to paint the the shadow of the building, and I'm going to pick cobalt, uh, not cobalt, cerulean blue for that. I might grab a smaller brush. And with, with brush choices, um, I'm not too panicky about brushes, um, but my, my basic rule is big brush, big area, little brush, little area. So look at, how, look at the size of the area you're painting and then try to match it with the brush. Nice and easy. And there's a little bit of green greenery coming across underneath here. Okay. Okay, my next phase, which is actually is to change my water. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do now. So let's chuck that away. Right, so what I'm going to do now is work on the, one of my favourite bits of this picture, which is going to be the cast shadow of, of this palm tree onto, onto the building. So I'm going to make it quite bright, and I think I'm going to make it cobalt blue. And I'm also going to add one or two touches of Elizarian, Elizarian crimson. I always get, oh, I've always called it Elizarian crimson, but <laughs> I don't know why. I probably misread it once years and years ago, and I've always called it that since then, but it's Elizarian crimson. So I'm going to paint the, the palm tree now, the shadow of the palm tree on here. So moving. The lovely shapes of that. Real feeling that it's going over the over the building. Isn't that nice? Shadows are a wonderful thing. They give a wonderful opportunity to make things more interesting. So we've got these lines here now coming in. So that's the a little angle. Palm trees coming here. Can we take a look? Sure. So I feel it's really coming together now, and um, the feeling is coming together of the painting. Um, I, I love the it, it's nature. It's 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 airy, and I really enjoy that part. So I'm going to paint more of the the background now. The the sort of um, branches and leaves in the background on this tree. So and in, in here more, so lots of little dips and dabs. Hinting, hinting, hinting at things. A little bit darker as well. Blues. Come in there, and also around here. That's what I like. And underneath the there's the window, the panes of the window. Quite like that. Just 
Yes, every, every brush stroke I do is just in an attempt to resolve it slightly, but only slightly. Okay, now I have to take a little stock of the picture and look at it and decide where I'm going to go to next. So the weak area is around here now, so I've to put the first wash in, but it doesn't really tell me that those are bushes. So I need to get that part of it. So I'm going to put a darker green in. So a bit of Viridian, maybe a bit of Hooker's Green. I haven't used that today, so I'll use a bit of that. Hooker's Green over here. Viridian, blues, and sort of trying to show that there's something more than just a plain color there. So I need, I need to create a dark, there's the, there's the tree trunk coming in there, so I need to create a darkness next to it, so that it doesn't just, so it tells me that there's an object there. So I'm gonna make the bush much darker. Darker here and darker there as well. I'm trying to hint at, make sure it's coming out. You see that? Okay, there's a little rock at the front right, which I'm going to include. So I'm going to paint the, this bit down here. So there's the shadow section of it. There's, I think it's a coral. What's a coral in, in Barbados? There may be a bit of shades around here. Bluer, just to try and give it, make it look like a rock, which I think that does. And then, maybe that's not quite right. Okay. So maybe I'll get, maybe I'll, what I'm gonna do, there's, I, I find that there's, there's quite a plain bit here on it. So, and that's what it's like in reality. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm going to imagine that there's a, uh, a palm tree out of picture here and it's casting a shadow. And that's, that's the marvellous thing about painting, in, in that you can do that. So you, you, can, be, you can really um, concentrate on, the, on the, um, the effects that you want. See that? Okay, so it's a blue cast. So a little bit of cobalt blue, nice and shiny on it. And I might include a little bit of Elizarian Crimson on it too, just for, just to give it a little bit of variety. Okay. That was fun, I enjoyed doing that. When you have drying periods, I mentioned it before, it's, it's a time to take stock and say, well, how can this painting be improved? And I think that did, that really helped it. Now I've just noticed, another, there's another little cactus plant, I don't know what you call it, a fern, maybe a baby palm tree just poking up there, which I'm going to put, and I'm going to put in, right in the middle here, it's sort of interesting shape. Coming in, maybe one there as well. That's not a uh, shadow, that is the actual thing. Coming in. Okay. Watch where you're going. Watch, watch where you're going. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. That's a lovely painting. You like it? Yeah. Good. There we go. So, what do I do next? That's the question, isn't it? So, I think I need to resolve the windows a little bit more with some darker colour. So, I'm going to do a little bit of ultramarine blue. That's a much darker tones, and I'm going to give it a little bit of shape. And 
then underneath here there's a that's part of the guttering but that's I really like that guttering it's one of my favorite bits of the whole painting in fact okay the roof I'm debating whether I need to give it a bit more resolution but I don't think so maybe a few more bits of palm tree coming out we're in the last throes of it now yeah. maybe a little bit of plants coming from the on the roof up here. A few more dashes up here. And maybe, I know what it needs. I've worked it out. So down here, I find that's quite a weak point here. So I think, so it, it, it's just the grass that's coming in, but I, I find it a bit weak. So what I'm gonna do again is to introduce a little bit of shadow. So. Uh, imagining that there's a little bit of maybe a palm tree coming in again. So a little bit of red, blue, just to give that feeling that there's something casting a shadow there. And here as well. And then the shadow of the actual rock, which is quite important. Okay, that's, that looks pretty good now. Quite like that. Right, I'm, I'm going to be painting a little bit of the um, the window frames now, because I think that sort of helps it. So uh, they're going to get my white paint out and um, just sort of pop a few bits and pieces in. Nothing too complicated. Um, just to give it a bit of shape. That's the shadow area. And then this one here. There. Maybe a few bits of to the tiles. There, I think, would be quite helpful just to try and extend the drain pipe. That's nice. Now they have a um, two little touches in the in the sky as well. I always squeeze the white paint out last because it's it's it dries so fast. Totally different from any other colour. There we go, that's a nice one. That's nice, isn't that? So some lighter areas of the... It's very green, lovely green shades these palm trees have. I'm trying to get in. Yeah, I think that's helped it. Now these, these things, these trees have a sort of um, metal band around the middle, which I, I, I sort of didn't put in. So I'm going to try and indicate it with a bit of white paint. So one there, a bluey colour. And one there. Maybe a little bit of <coughs> a highlight as well. Go okay, so just concentrating on the little metal barrier, so there's just going to get the underneath part of it, just to give it a sense that there's, it's, it's got, it's been tacked on. That's nice. It's got a, there as well. And Tanya's noticed that there are some little yellow flowers there, which I just hadn't seen. So I'm going to pop a few little blops in of the yellow flower. And there's a couple here as well. Right, so I, I think I've pretty much done it there now and um, I'm happy with it. I've, I've had a few moments with the camera off looking at it and thinking what, I, what can I do? And what, one, of the, one of the parts of uh, finishing a painting is that you have to know when to stop. And it's a decision that you take that, that says, well, if I do more, will it be any better? And in this case, it's not. Now I'm hoping the video is gonna turn out okay because it's quite a speckled light here. Uh, this is the only shaded space that I could find, and there's a tree tree up there, so the the, uh, the the shadows are going all over the place. But I hope you saw it well enough. Now, the the bit that I like to do at the end really is to is to do the little bit of pencil work on it, just just to bring things out a bit. So uh, I'll, I'll carry on with that. So maybe a little bit of the roof here coming down. There's not much to do here. Um, 
just just hinting at a few things. Uh, probably didn't need to do it at all. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> It's, it's nice being in the public eye as well. It's, uh, you, you do meet a lot of people when you, when you do painting, and uh, that's a really fun part. It's good to have a little chat with people and pass the time of day. It's one of the, one of the pleasures of painting outdoors uh, as, as, a, as, a way, as uh, away from the studio is that you meet people, and that's really wonderful. Right, I think that's, that's pretty much done now. So I'll turn it around there so you can see it, hopefully. Oh, I haven't done the signature yet. I mean, I'll do that later. So that's the finished painting, and um, I, I really like it. It has that loose feel about it, which I love so much, the impressionistic feel. And I've, I've really enjoyed doing that, and I've had lots of chats with people uh, as it's progressed, and lots of people passing. So, yeah, it's been a wonderful experience at a lovely temperature. <laughs>